All right, so the next step is actually cutting with the multicam, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. Now, one of the things that you'll wanna make sure you've done is enable the multi-camera viewer button, which you'll find here we are in the program monitor. Down here, you can actually see, let me just go ahead and zoom over a little bit, toggle multicam view right here, okay? If you don't see that button, you need to go into the button editor, which is this plus sign over here on the right, go into the button editor, and again, if you didn't already see it, here it is, toggle multicam view, and you can simply click and drag that down into this blue highlighted button section, and then you'll have access to that button. Keep in mind that you can change your workspaces. They may not look exactly like mine here. Um, I've customized mine up in the window menu under workspaces. You can see you can always reset to the saved layout, and I'm currently working in the editing workspace. That project will open up in a modified assembly workspace. All right, now if I just quickly scrub through this, let me just mute the audio for a second here. As I scrub through, you'll start to see where all of the various camera angles appear. Now this is pretty awesome and we can immediately start cutting across these. So let's just go ahead and I'll play back and show you a little bit of this real quickly. And we're gonna start with this cut. So camera five is the first one that has continuous content. So we're actually going to start there. All right, so let me go ahead and play this back. And I'm simply going to use the numeric keypad here to switch my angles. So let's take a quick look at this, all right? Here we go. First things first, I'ma say all the words inside my head. I'm fired up and tired of the way that things have been, oh, ooh. Okay, now, I was using the keypad, so right there I was thinking, God, what camera is that? Now, by the way, you can also simply click directly inside the multicam editing interface here. So if I wanted to wind up writing some of the cuts that I did. Second thing, second, don't you tell me what you think that I can be. I'm the one at the sale, I'm the master of my sea, oh. And the moment you stop, if you look down below, you'll actually see all of the various cuts with all of the, the various cameras that were used. The problem is if you're using a keypad, and first and foremost, I just, I don't know exactly what camera, what angle, this is a little confusing. So here's two quick tips when actually cutting your multicam, they're gonna make this process a heck of a lot easier. It's by enabling, uh, enabling your overlays. And someone is saying levels there. Yeah, you know what? The track is super, super hot. So let me go ahead and drop this. I'll drop it down by like one dB. Let me just play this back for one second. You should be just fine. Oh. Perfect, okay. So here in the wrench menu inside of your program monitor, you, under settings, all the way at the bottom, you'll see here, I don't know if you can see it on the screen. There we go. We've got overlay settings. So let's go into our settings here. And now you can choose what it is that you want to display, all right? And the key here is we're just gonna leave all of these at the defaults, but I simply want to enable my overlays during playback. And this is simply so that I can actually see what I'm doing as I'm cutting. And then you can change all the various attributes. You can see source time code, they can be vertically aligned. You can choose all of these other things here. Let's go ahead and click okay on this. Go back to the ranch menu and turn on those overlays. And now you can actually see exactly what's happening. Now, if again, if I don't want this other additional information inside the, uh, the program section, or this is actually the active camera, we can disable that if we want to, okay? But that's where you're going to enable these. So now that I have that on, let's kind of skip ahead. I'm just gonna mute one more second so I can find a section with more cameras. All right, so here's a section where we've got uh, yeah, we've got the guitarist coming in there. So guitarist, drummer, and bass player, right about here. So let's now continue cutting from this section, but now with the assistance of those overlays, I really know what it is that I'm looking at. Here we go. Hoping my feelings, they would drown, but they never did, ever lived, ever and flowing, inhibited, limited, till it broke up when it rained down, it rained down like... Okay, now again, in a case of something like that, 
where I cut and then suddenly the shot changed, right, because we ran out of shot there. Here's where you can now start using all of the classic editing techniques that you already know from Premiere Pro. So first and foremost, if I simply want to adjust the position of where we cut from, I can actually just simply click and drag this clip and drag the other clip to it. All right, and kind of fill that gap that way. Additionally, if I hold down the command key and double click, this is going to allow me to create a roll edit. So I can either roll right on screen here, forward or backward, okay, and adjust the duration there. And I can do it on some of these other clips as well. Let's go ahead and choose one of these here. Again, we can roll either a frame back or five frames back. You can also add a default transition right from here if you wanted to do something like that. So let's go ahead and wind back on this and hit play. Believer, believer. All right, and very easily start cutting this together. All right, let's go back into our multicam view and now we can see all of our cameras. So again, if you wanted to do something like a ripple, all the standard shortcuts here, Again, I'm holding down command. I can adjust the, uh, the out point of this and it shifts everything over accordingly. You can simply just reconfigure how long the duration of each camera. You can again, uh, go between the edits here, hold down command, double click, and then you can roll between the shots. And additionally, and this is why I talked about having the names in the shot themselves. This is where it gets really, really cool. Let's say that I wanted to swap this out for a different camera. I can simply right click on the clip here inside the timeline, go into multi-camera, and now I see the list of all of the cameras available to me. So again, I could look up and say, okay, yep, camera two, it's vocals, swap it out, and it automatically swaps out that shot very, very easily, all right? And then you just keep on cutting, you just keep on working. And as I mentioned, let's say that we wanted to augment one of these tracks. Let me take a look at one here. Uh, track eight. Okay, so track eight has nothing on it for a good long while. I could take, if I went back to my project panel, let's go into something like uh, Dan Dolph Boxing. We'll go into one of these cuts, all right? And I'm simply going to drag a couple of these shots down into, oh, that's track seven. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. I can drag these into seven and eight. Let's drag a couple. All right, something like this. This is approximately around 21 seconds. So if I go back to my multicam, notice now that in track seven, now. Second thing, second, don't you tell me what you think that I can be. I'm the one at the cell, I'm the. Okay, you can add additional cuts to the blank space in your multicam sequence, or you can just add new tracks. Now, obviously, those aren't, there's no sound there. So if the timing isn't perfect, you might likely slip and slide to kind of make those synchronize a little bit better. You can, of course, also overlay clips over top of the multicam sequence here. So you've got a lot of different options to create that multicam very, very simply with this incredible footage directly inside of Premiere Pro today using the audio sync function. And again, enabling those overlays so you know exactly what camera you're cutting to. Now, one last thing I wanna show you before we get out of multicam and go on to cutting to markers. You'll notice that my playback performance, I gotta admit, it's quite stellar. I mean, we're cutting against 19 different cameras on a laptop here. Part of why I'm getting nice performance, very lean file, file sizes, but also I'm using our fractional playback resolutions, which I've got dialed into one quarter res here. So on my laptop, if I were to go to full, all right, this allows me to see every pixel as I'm cutting it. I don't know that I'm gonna get full real time. Let me try. I'm fired up and tired of the way that things have been. Oh, oh. Well, amazingly, I didn't see my drop frame indicator go into yellow, so I was actually getting full real time. This footage is so well done and so lean, it just performs beautifully. If you find you're getting any skipping or stuttering or it's just not playing back in real time, go ahead and drop that. You can drop it down to half, quarter, even one eighth resolution that isn't doing anything destructive to your files. It's just changing the viewable res on screen as you're cutting. And you'll notice again in the wrench flyout menu here, you've got playback resolution and then pause resolution. And I'll typically leave the pause resolution always at uh, full quality. So that way when I stop or I pause, I can see exactly what the shot looks like. But as I'm cutting, it can be one quarter just to give me that real time better performance. 
All right, so that's fractional playback resolutions, part of that multicam cutting experience. And then if you wanna see everything without the multicam, and again, you can always just disable those overlays, go ahead and turn those off, wind back, and now we can just watch the cut as it is. Uh, and if we even wanted to go full screen here, uh, we can go to our tilde key on the US keyboard or control tilde, which is going to give us our uninterrupted cinema mode and play it back like this. First, I'm gonna say all the words inside my head. I'm fired up and tired of the way that things have been. Oh, ooh. All right, super, super cool. Okay, and again, that was control tilde on the US keyboard to go into cinema mode and the tilde key to go into full screen mode.